um, okay um i'm taking you through some fish pictures and uh, we'll talk a bit about the identification um I usually say if, if you want to take pictures of them, you need a camera plus lighting, you need a compatible dive body, body and you need a long, slow, unrushed dives. So um, I'm beginning to think that the group that you're listening to uh, uh, are advertising for the New Key Tourist Association and um, some of the dives in Connemara Association and also um, advertising Olympus TG cameras. I've got the TG4, which is the oldest of the ones I'm hearing of the people talking. And um, I'm leaving the settings. You can look over it again, or you can contact me if you want more details. Basically, I've been using this sort of video torch um, in recent times, and that's the output from it. And um, I've found that uh, I, I can do better than with my flash, but I use the flash sometimes, the internal flash, uh, just for when I'm doing uh, close-ups of things like nudie pranks. Uh, the book, the current book for the fishes is probably the Marine Fishes of Wales, and the details are here. Um, but there are rumors that there's a, a sea search book on fishes uh, being considered at least, maybe not written yet. But um, that's, that's, this is an excellent book and covers everything we're more or less likely to see. Uh, just for completeness sake, I'm saying that the, some of the fishes are, I would be referring to them as cartilaginous fishes, and they would include dogfish, sharks, skates, and rays. And to me, this is a lesser, lesser spotted dogfish. And I, I'll come back to that in a moment as to why I stressed to me. And this is the, uh, an electric ray a picture taken by the University of Limerick Subacqua Club a few years ago in Brandon Creek. Um, a note on the English words, what I call dogfish, uh, the book calls cat sharks. So I haven't got around to calling it a small spotted cat shark, but that's what I was showing you a few moments ago. But most of the fishes are bony fishes. That means they've got true bone and they've got their gills on, sorry, they've got their gills under a gill cover, which is, so the first word that we'll need to learn is operculum. And this has, shows that um, the basic things that you're looking for in fishes. So there's a dorsal fin, uh, and then there's a pectoral and pe pelvic fin, and notice where they are because in the more advanced fishes, the pectoral fin has moved up here and the pelvic fin has moved forward and it's called ventral fin in this diagram. And then we're take, take a look in the field, you're, you're looking to see is it a straight lateral line or is it a humpy lateral line? See if there's any black spots on the fish, see if it has a barbel. So they are the things that you're supposed to be noticing. So during the dive, photo is great, but get the size. Is it the size of your hand, the size of your hand to your elbow? Is it a full arm's length? Any obvious black or colored spots? The lateral line, that's a line of receptors along the side of the fish, but is it straight or is it, does it have an obvious hump? And fins, notice where they are. And there are three fins. Um, if I showed you again, you'll see them in the next slide. There are three dorsal fins, or the dorsal fin is in three parts in the cod family. And does it have a barbel, which is the sort of single whisker? So this one has a barbel. There's three parts to its dorsal fin. There's the pectoral fin. There's the pelvic fin. So this is cod family. And this is a pouting. And that's the sort of way you end up trying to see them in the field. And they're going to be moving around. So, but it's obvious enough to see the lateral lines, I hope. And uh, you can see all the other characteristics. I usually advise that people would take on one group of fish at a time. And I always say that the, probably the nicest group, 
So you study the wrasses for a night before your dive. And then there are five species and one of the species has different males. Um, the males are very different to the females. So the cuckoo wrasse is the one that everybody knows the male, but not everybody knows the female. The female is a brownish, pinkish brownish color, and she has distinct black and white stripes at the base of her tail here. And then sometimes during the summertime, you will see um, what looks like a distinct female, but she's developing blue. And here are some more of them. And these are the races, and you can Google this if you want to get more information, uh, have a situation where the females can become males. So these are all females that are on their way to becoming males. So if they run out of a male, if the male dies, then another female becomes a male. So then the other um, races, this is probably the smallest one, it's the rock cook, and it has um, stripes on the back tail, and it has can look blue. So some divers come back into the boat and they said, I saw these tiny little um, cuckoo races, but they're not tiny cuckoo races, they're um, rock cooks. So there's, you can see that this is, once you know that it's less than the size, the length of your hand, there, um, that's the male of the rock hook. The gold cine rast is also only about the size of your uh, hand, and it has a distinct black spot um, at the base of the tail. And then the uh, corkwing rast has a black spot. If it has a black spot, they're not always present, but if it has, it has a black spot in the middle of the tail. And then there's um, the, all the other big wrasses that you see are ballon wrasses, and there's a huge variety of colors. So basically you need to know the first four and then everything else is probably a ballon wrasse. And these are all different ballon wrasses. And then there's one large uh, one to be looking out for. It looks like a corkwing wrass, um, but it has pink lips and it has this little bluish thing here. And I think the situation is that I've seen one on one dive in Connemara in Isle Wee. And Tony told me that I was probably correct because he had seen it along the same spot. Flatfish. I tell people, you, and if you're diving with me and I'm looking at a flatfish, you'll see me holding out both my hands to see is it left-handed or right-handed. Basically, you have got to imagine where is the mouth, where is the um, operculum or the gill covers uh, in relation to the mouth. And the right-handed fish, the common ones are place, flounder, and sole, lemon sole. I haven't seen dab or black sole you know, in, on dives. And then on the left-handed fish, the only group I've seen are top knots. So let's show you some, if we're looking at a place here, um, here is the operculum and the eyes are over here. So, um, and if you hold your hand out, it, that can only be a right-handed fish. And here again is the operculum. This is the pectoral fin, there are the eyes. And so that is a close up of the head of a place and it's a right handed fish. This is also a right handed fish over here and everything fits to make it a lemon sole. It has a relatively straight uh, lateral line with a little bump at the near the operculum. And the fins, sorry, the dorsal and ventral fins uh, more or less reach the tail. Left-handed fish, and this is top knots. These photographs have been taken in Newquay. There have been a pair of not top knots under one overhang in Newquay for some years now. And uh, this is the sort of shot. And again, you have to imagine this with your hand and the mouth is at one end, obviously, but here's the operculum here. 
and so that can only be um, that can only be um, a left-handed fish. And this is the same individual or its partner. Uh, sometimes they come closer and pose for you. And what you notice here is that the dorsal fin comes right down to the mouth. And that makes it a common, um, a common um, top knot. And again, you can see here, the fin coming almost as far as the mouth. Whereas in this one, and it's also a left-handed fish, there's a space between the front of the fin and the mouth. There's a space along here, and this with the highly colored nature, and the fact that this fish is only about 12 centimeters long, uh, about the size of your hand, this is a Norwegian top knot. Blennies and gobies. Gobies have the dorsal fin split into two parts. The blennies have a single dorsal fin. I'm going with blennies first. So the common tompot blenny. They keep posing. So you keep taking photographs. All of these are tompot blennies. But then very closely related is the red blenny. And the red blenny male, if it flashes it for you, has this blue in the front of the um, fin of the dorsal fin. This is probably a female. No sign of the blue flash of the dorsal fin. This one is a female, I think, or else it's a juvenile male. And this one has the blue flash, but it's looking at me upside down. And then gobies. This one shows the split in the dorsal fin quite well. And leopard goby, black goby. This was near the pier in Newquay for a long time, last year, the year before. I'm not putting a name on this one. I'd have to go to take out the book and check it out, but it's, uh, I leave it as being a, a goby from Isle Wee in Connemara. This one is the two-spotted goby. And a lot of people think these are little young fish, but you see them regularly in the swimming in the water. And um, so two-spotted goby. Sorry, I'm going to make my phone. I must, must silence my phone. Done. I should have done it beforehand, I apologize. And then one of the rare gobies in Ireland, um, as far as I know, largely confined to Loch Ine in County Cork, is the red-mouthed goby. And then to move on to the scorpion fish, and what you're looking for here, they have spines on their operculum, but they have a white barbel here, which is always visible and they're easy, but they have extremely good camouflage. And again, there's the white barbel. So it's a long spine sea scorpion. And I particularly like the next shot um, because there's the barbel, but this part of the purple is part of the fish. This part of the purple is part of the background. Um, coralline algae. And since people say that's long spine sea scorpions, this is the short spine sea scorpion. It doesn't have the barbel. And then tadpole fish are something else that can be looked for, certainly in West Clare. I've seen them in Newquay, and I've seen them in the distant past on Middle Rock in Kilkey. And most recently, this one was seen in Miles's Creek, Kilkey. And so um, it's a dark purplish fish with a very long dorsal fin and these uh, ends to its um, pelvic fins. So there's the pectoral fin and a very strange looking mouth. And the one thing I can say here about the photography is that I tried to put on my video light 
and it fogged up everything. I could see nothing on the camera. And for the first time, I used my ordinary dive light and that this, that's what these were taken. These are fish that are way in, two meters in at the end of an overhang. And um, we went back on three dives in Kilki on this occasion uh, to this spot, and I saw them on two of the okay, on two of the dives. So sorry, it's probably the same individual, but I saw it on the same uh, in the same spot um, on two dives out of three. And there was one years and years ago in, in Middle Rock in Kilki. I think I saw it over a period of more than two years. And likewise, there was one for a long time, and I think it's. Did Joe Fitzgibbon say it's still there uh, in Newquay? Uh, but I haven't seen it in Newquay uh, for over a year. And here we are, purplish fish with long fin, long dorsal fin. This is why it's called a tadpole fish, because it looks a little bit like a tadpole. Uh, Seahorses related to um, Sorry, they're related to the, this is a pipefish related to the seahorses, and there's the seahorse head. So this is the greater pipefish, and this was also in New Key. Triggerfish in New Key. Baby garners. Connemara clingfish. Red mullet, this was in Loch Ayn. And then um, the story of the lump sucker in, um, this is the um, a shot taken by Joe Fitzgibbon. Uh, this is a large, very large fish, the lump sucker. And then these shots were taken over a year ago. And this is the lump sucker straight on. So they were over a year ago. And when we go back to our files, uh, there was, we were seeing lump suckers in much the same position uh, in previous years. And then this December, um, I think it was Joe Fitzgibbon found, uh, and certainly he, it was he pointed it out to me. These are the um, lump sucker eggs, and this is being guarded by the male. So the male is more colorful than the female. And here we see the colorful, but this male had a most horrific gash on its tail. And on subsequent dives, we're fairly convinced that this male was dead. And, uh, but the good news is that um, Joe and Benny have found uh, yet another lump sucker with yet another nest of eggs. So uh, basically I want to thank my patient dive buddies, especially Tom McDonald, and then those who took me to these places in the first place, mainly Tony, Joe and Benny. And then remember that what I'm advocating is long, slow dives with no rush. Okay, thank you.